Hi guys, welcome back. Anyone that's new to the channel, welcome. Firstly, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone that sent me messages, um, wishing us luck and you know thinking yeah. of us on our wedding day. Thank it you. went fantastic, <laughs> it was brilliant. So thank you very much, guys. Right, um, it's a quick little video, probably only take about four hours or so. Once I start waffling, you know what I'm like. Um, I've had quite a few people, uh, now I know I said I was going to do some turnings, and I am. I'm going to be doing some videos over the next couple of days, and I'll be putting them up. Um, firstly, I've had a few people asking me about sharpening. Uh, I've had a couple of people ask if they could send me their chisels, would I sharpen them, send them back to them. No, 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 I won't. Because, one, it's not something I do. Two, it's going to cost you, well, parcel falls 24, it's going to cost you a tenner to send them to me. It's going to cost you a tenner for me to send them back. What are you going to do? Half a day's turning? You're going to have to have them sharpened again. They're not, they're not going to stay sharp for us. So I'm like, no, you need to learn to sharpen. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that, at the moment, you can't afford to go and buy out sharpening gear and stuff. You know, there's no nothing wrong. You know, a lot of people, there's just not a lot of money about at the moment. And people are all worried about what they're spending. But you want to get into doing your traditional turning, but you want to be able to sharpen your tools. So I'm going to show you a quick little method of how you don't need no expense okay um and you can get to sharpen your tools and get you into it do you for now it's not a permanent fix this isn't something to do for all the time it's just to get you by get you into sharpening your tools get you to learn how to how to sharpen them so i'm just going to give you a few things and it doesn't cost you much money at all okay personally i don't like most of the grinders out grinders out there even the slow speed ones they go too fast for my liking um, not only do I think they're too fast, they take so long to slow down, especially for me, I have CBM wheels. Um, and you know it, guys, if you've got CBM wheels, you turn it off, and it's like, yeah, go away for a weekend, come back, and the thing's still spinning. And if you want to just make a quick adjustment, hey, you've got to put your fingers on it, slow it down, I don't like all that. So my personal grinder that I use, I made up myself, um, and mine is over here. My, mine is made from, this is my old Axminster lathe I had many years ago and I turned this into my grinder I cut the bed away I've got no legs it works fantastic variable speed and I have my CBM wheels mounted on that and I can mount any wheel any polishing mop anything I want onto this I make all my own jigs um, I've, I've got I mean this is the uh, true grind one which oh, Christ, when I bought it I bought this years and years ago I'll pay 65 quid off it. it was something like that £239 now for this thing. With, all right, you get the guide with it, but so what? £239 quid. That's not, he doesn't even come with a grinder. That's just for that, you know. So, yeah, so a lot of you guys, you haven't got the money for that. So, fair enough. Right, let's see how we can get you sharpening with very little expense. Right, I went today and I bought a grinding wheel, okay, from Machine Mart. People might, ah, oh, now that gets me on to something oh, now. Oh or Waffle Alert, Machine here, Mart. Here we go. <laughs> uh, now, um, my pillar drill. I bought a pillar drill uh, over 10 years ago from Machine Mart. Clark one. People knock Clark tools. Yeah, they're all right. So some of their stuff can be a little bit cheap and cheerful, but it gets you by. I've had no problems with Clark tools. I think they're fantastic. Um, my my compressor, 25 years old. It's Clark one. It works. It's run two nail guns going constant all day long. It's only a 50 litre. Still runs perfect. Um, yeah, my, my drill press I bought 10 years ago. Well, I wanted to upgrade it. I wanted a bigger, I needed a bigger one. It was getting a bit uh, overworked. And I was going to buy the bigger version of from the Clark, which was 900 quid. And I looked and I thought, yeah, okay, but uh, I might go for like the Axminster one, the trade, the world, a professional range it is now. So I opted for that, which works out <laughs> with your delivery, 1,200 quid. Well... The tool itself, yes, is lovely now, um, but really Axminster tools, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not happy with them at all. I get a phone call from Axminster tools. Your drill will be there tomorrow, all right? So you've got your pallets coming tomorrow between, uh, be morning, late morning to early afternoon. Right, fine, okay, so I'll make sure I'm here. I've got to be here for it. It's, you know, it comes on a big pallet. Got a range to have someone with me because it weighs 198 kilos when it comes out. So, you know, yeah, I mean, this is all muscle, but I'm not lifting 198 <laughs> kilos on my own. 
Mm. So I arranged for someone to be here. Then, just before midday, I get a phone call from a pallet company. Oh, we want to arrange for your drill to be your uh, pallet to be delivered for tomorrow. I said, no, no, you're bringing it today. I said, you're actually meant to be here any time now. We haven't even got it yet. Oh, well, when's it coming? Well, tomorrow. I said, well, what time? I can't give you time. I said, well, I'm not taking a whole day off work again to wait here. I need a time. Well, I'll see what I can do. So the woman goes off, I'll get back to you. No, I'm near nothing, so I phone Axe Minister Tools. I said, uh, my drill is meant to come today and it hasn't come. Well, uh, you have to wait for the, the pallet company will ring you and tell you when they're, they're going to deliver. I said, no. I said, you rung me yesterday, told me it will be here today. Axe Minister Tools. Well, they can't tell you then when it's going to be there until they've got it. I said, I know that, the pallet company's told me that, but you told me it will be here. So I said, I want it here by 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Right, okay, let me make some phone calls. Then she phoned me back. And yes, it did. Then they arranged it and it come 11 o'clock that next morning, before 11. So that was fine. Big pallet. Got it delivered. They had to put it just outside the back of the house. They couldn't do it. They won't bring it up into the workshop or nothing like that. So they put it there. So I had to wait because I was getting, that was on the Thursday. Couldn't do nothing with it on Thursday. I got someone to help me get it into the workshop on Friday, but I couldn't do much with it. I was getting married Saturday. So I come out Sunday, got it all bolted down, set up nice, turn it on. Yeah, thought, right, give it a try, drilled something. The vibration was crazy. And I was working, trying to work out, it's all bolted down, looked at it. Well, the, where the table fits on, the big square table, that's, the drill is over there, but anyway, where it fits on, the collar that locks it up, stops it swiveling around, it's cracked. So it's got a crack in it. So I take a photo, I email it to Axminster Tools, I phone them up Monday morning, tell them about it. He says, well, can you send me a photo? I said, no, you've already got it, because I sent you an email. He had a look, oh yeah, no problem, okay, I'll get a part out to you. Okay, fantastic. Uh, half past eight next morning, part arrives. The wrong part. They send me the bit that goes on the actual column itself and not the bit that I need. Oh, in the meantime, while I was on the phone to him, I said, obviously, I've got to take this one off. I said, there's a great big nut on there that holds that on. I said, can you tell me what size that nut is? Because you don't provide any tools for adjustment and it's supposed to be able to adjust the table for 45. But how do I adjust it? Well, you have to loosen that nut. Right, so uh, what do I use to loosen that? Well, I said, no spanners fit it. Biggest spanner I've got is 22 mil socket set. 22 mil is your biggest socket. So what, can you tell me what size it is? Well, hang on a minute. No, information's not available to me. Right, I said, well, don't you think it should be? Yeah, I'm not teaching me granny to suck eggs here, mate, but shouldn't you put it in your catalogue to let people know what they've got to buy for that? So I've got to go out and buy a socket. Can you tell me what size it is? Well, I could go and measure one off of another drill. I said, yeah, it's all right, mate. Don't worry about it. I can do that. Anyway, it's, it's 30 mil. So anyone that buys one, it's 30 mil. You need a 30 mil socket to be able to adjust your table. So anyway, I've got that. Um, but yeah, wrong part turns up. So I phone him up. Uh, you sent me the wrong part. Oh, well, uh, have we got the photo? I said, yeah, you got a photo. All right, yeah, that's different. Part. Right, okay, I'll get another one. I'll get it out to you tomorrow. No problem. Yeah, all right, fair enough. So this is two days. I can't use it. Um, so in that meantime, I thought, well, I'm not going to wait around any longer. So I welded it. I took it off and I welded it and it's working fine. Next day, well, they sent me an email. Um, don't worry about sending the part back, the wrong part. Keep it. It's going to cost too much in postage. So I thought, well, I've got the wrong part, but I'll keep it. The next day, yeah, the new part turns up with... The same part they turned me the first time, sent me the first time, connected to it. So now I've got two of the wrong parts and one of the right parts. So there you go. That's <laughs> it. But I haven't put it on because I welded that up and I just put so much weld on, extra weld on it. It's never going to break and that's a lot stronger than the original one anyway. So, but that cost me £300 more than the Clark one. And actually it's exactly the same machine because they all come from China. and They're all the same thing. It's just a different name on it. Um... So now a bit disappointed how Axe Minster and all that. And the fact that they can't even tell you what nut that is to adjust when they advertise it as an adjustable table, but it's not unless you go and buy a 30 mil socket, which is basically another tenner, guys. So allow for that. There you go. Mm -hmm. 
Right, anyway, whinging over. Right, so anyway, <laughs> getting back to it. Where was I? Right, yeah. so I've been today, I've bought this. Right, I, I've only got CBM wheels. I don't own one of these, but really I wanted to get one for when I do a bit of grinding on. I don't like doing that. It's mild steel and stuff on, on uh, CBM wheels. So, eight inch disc, 899 from Machine Mart. Okay, fine grit I've got. Get a fine grit. Right, now, you ain't got a grinder. Okay, and if you buy one of these, what's it one? I mean, there's nothing wrong with the, the, the cheaper grinders. They are fantastic. I've got two. I've got CBM wheels on them. Trouble is, they turn at 2,900 RPM. Way too fast for sharpening tools. Okay, it's okay if you're grinding. Sharpening tools, no. You just blew the end. The minute that end's gone blue, no, you've, you've, you've lost it. It's, it's no good. You mustn't blue your tools. Okay, so right. Now, you've got fantastic grinder right here you've got a lathe so use it as a grinder and i'm going to show you how you can do that okay so firstly right pop your bit of plastic your plastic bushing pop it out we're going to need that so i'm going to pop that wheel over there just out of the way and what we're going to do we're going to start turning so first things first right i've just got a piece of two by two just a bit of beach here. And what we want to do is we're going to put this between centers and we're going to round it off. And you'll see what we're going to do. Now you guys have got your pro edge and all that. Nothing here for you, mate. Skip on, go for another video. We know you can afford all that and you want to buy all that. This isn't for you. This is for the people that haven't got that, but want to or need to sharpen their tools or see if they even like it. I mean, there's people, uh, People, they go out and buy all this stuff and all this expense and two months later they're selling it all because they don't want to do it so right okay spin that up yes i'm using the normal tool don't worry about that this is just the speed lisa's now going to run away because you don't want to yeah. get covered in <laughs> in shaving Right, now I want this just to round. Well, no, it's spinning. Right, hang on. There you go. Lock it up. I want this just to round. There we go. I want to keep it as big as I can, all right? So now I'm just going to put a, a tenon on the end of here. Now for me, yes, I've got my little tenon on, so... That's it, that's all I need. Right. I'm going to stop that, turn that around, put that in the chuck. Right, actually, I'm, not, I'm normally rushing like mad because I just rush when I work all the time. I'm all out of my rusher. Um, I'll slow it down a little bit. Right, okay, so I'm going to put my chuck on. I do apologise, I'm going a bit too fast, just shout at me. Right, okay, let's get that in there. Get that shot, tighten down like that. Right, okay. Now, it's a bit bigger than what I want, so I'm going to part it off a bit. Right, okay, I'm just going to put it down a bit smaller. So I want, uh, what do I want? I want that bit going to be there. And another bit here, so I'm going to cut this off. Right, yeah, okay. Right, I'm there we go, get rid of that, I don't need that. That's all I want is this piece. Right, okay. So now I need to actually I'm gonna because obviously if you ain't sharpened your tools yet, you're gonna be having to use a carbide. Okay? So I'm gonna take this down a little bit. Go yeah, nice and smooth like that. Right now, 
I've got to make that so that fits in this bushing, okay? Now you can do calipers and measure it, I'm just, uh, that's getting there. A little bit more. Right, let me just check that. You stop there and check it. See if that's going to fit in there. Yeah, that is. That's going to be a nice, nice snug fit. Okay, that's what I want. Right, so that's the first bit there. So, now what I'm going to do, I want to drill just a little bit of a little hole in that. So, let's get this off and put the chuck on. Right, this one I do. No real size hole. Any size hole is going to do ya. You'll see in a minute what that's uh, what that's going to be for on this one. Right, that's do me there. So we'll take that off. How far in did you go with that? <laughs> I just went through this piece. I, I'll show you. Look, it's got. We're going to part this off now because this piece is done. And now I'm going to show you how big this piece is. All right. Right. Okay. So that piece is only that big. Okay, I've drilled right through it. As you see, that's just a little bit rough there, but that's all right, we'll get rid of that in a little while. All right, it's only got part of it. So, we've made our, that fits in there, okay? So you can see where this is going. All right, that fits in there, okay? You're nice and snug like that, tight. That's how you want it to fit. All right, so that's one. Now we've got to do one on this side. But we don't need the hole in it. Right, okay. Right, again, we're doing this now. The same thing. So, we're bring it up, try it. Oh, nearly there. Oh, that's it. Right, I think that's it there. We're done. Right, so let's have a look, let's see. Is that gonna go on there? If not, then I'll have to just take it back and do another little go. But I want it tight. There, that's fitted on. That's perfect, okay? Now, I'm just gonna, oh, sorry, come through here. I'm gonna grab my wheel. Okay, so I've got my wheel. I put my wheel back on there. I'm going to pop that piece in there, and then bring my tail stock up there. Right. Now turn our speed down nice and slow. And there we have our grinder. Okay. So now we can have our grinder. Everything's running nice and true. You're on your lathe, you're between centers, nothing can go anywhere. But do remember, when you're sharpening with this, keep this on, keep your face shield on, okay? Because you haven't got any guards on there. So keep your face shield on. This is only a temporary thing. If this was a CBM wheel, I'd say don't worry, you'll be fine. But you should still wear something when you're grinding, okay? For me, you've got dust anyway, so, right. That's that bit done. So now what we're going to do, we're going to pop that centre away. Because we've got that, but that ain't going to help us to sharpen, is it? How are we going to sharpen? Right. So that's your, that's your sharpening wheel, okay? Right, I'm going to put that up there for now. Now we need something, we need some jigs, don't we? 
we need to we need to be able to do a, a little jig so we want something because we, we want something that's a bit like like this don't we so we can put our so we can do our our grinding okay now if you've got one of these you can use this okay but if you ain't got one of those what we can do is we can very quickly because we're wood turners so we can make one up and all we need to do is we need to make ourselves a little one of these this is a, a fujima jig right <laughs> technical name that's a fujima jig right that goes in there Right, and then we make one of these that our chisel goes in, and that sits in there, and we can do our grind. So let's make one of these, and one of these. And I'll show you how I made it. So first off, it's wood. Right, let's get the tool rest in. Now when you make this, don't, uh, I'm going to take the chuck off for a minute because I don't need the chuck at the moment. Alright, pop that up there. Right, when you. So I'll drop the drill bit, never mind. You need it? No, not at the moment. Right, okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna roughly mark my centers on this. Right, so, pop that between centers and I just wanna bring it to round. Right now for me, just so I'm not taking too long, I'm just just using my, my roughing gouge, okay? Get this thing back up. Right, okay. Then I just want this to round. There we go. Now I want to put a little tenon on that because I want to mount it back in the chuck. So I need to drill it. Okay, guys. Now what I want to do is take this out because I've got to drill a hole through here. Now what you need to work out, let me take this knife off for a minute. What you need to work out now is what your largest um, gouge is, your bowl gouge or spindle gouge, what you're going to be sharpening. Okay, let me see what one's this one. Alright, this is, right, 22 mil I'm going to use. Okay, that'll cover for up to three quarter inch bulk gouge. Right. Now, as you can see on here, I made this, let me get tape measure, ruler, I should say. Right, this is 40 mil, 40 mil long, I've made this. So, there you go. Basically down to there. 
So 40 mil on my drill, that's going to bring me to roughly around there. So we're, right, we're going to drill this. So I'm going to slow the lathe down, turn that on. Right, slow it down nicely so it don't burn. And we're just going to drill down the middle. And guys, just go in slowly, do a little bit at a time. No rush, just take it nice and easy. You don't no screeching, you don't want too much smoke. Okay, because that means that the wood's getting too hot. Near enough down, I'm going to go a little bit further. It don't, it's not going to make no difference. There we go. Right, okay, let's pop that out. Right, let me just uh, get a hole, stick your finger in it. Right, okay, that should be that should be far enough. I'm going to get that back up to speed. I'm going to want it faster in a minute, so we'll turn it off for now. Right, so we're done with that bit. Now. What you're gonna need to get yourself for this, so it is one of these. Okay, now these are threaded inserts. Okay, so you just get them out of B and Q's, whatever. This is an M6. Okay, and it has a threaded a threaded insert. So you screw that into your wood. So drill a hole, screw that in, and then your bolt goes through it. So if you just go into any DIY place and ask them for threaded inserts, okay. I use a six because that'll do down to a small spindle gouge. If you, you know, don't want to go for too smaller, then you can use a, an M8 if you want. But M6, I find, is, is just about right. So, what I'm going to do now. Right, first off, I'm now, if you haven't got one of these, make one. Turn yourself a piece of wood, a piece of dowel, that fits in your... Um, banjo here, okay? Because you're gonna want that as your drill guide. Pop your center in there. And then what you can do is if you put your drill through, if you put your drill bit through there, then you can line your drill bit up to your center, okay? There we go. That's there like that. Right, okay, so now that's there, I can bring this over and I can now drill a hole through here, right in the centre of this. So if I could, can you pass my drill? It's just behind you on the side there, that yellow one, please, darling. <laughs> it's a man's tool. I know. That's why it's heavy. <laughs> they do pink girly ones if you're interested. Yeah, I love that. But this is man's stuff. <laughs> right, okay. I'm going to lock that. There we go. And we've just got to drill a hole through here. Right. right, okay. That's one done. That's for our threaded insert. Okay. Now, what we want to do is directly opposite that. So what I'm going to do, I'm basically going to use this. I'm just going to eyeball it for centre. Yep, I'm at centre. I'm going to come down here like this. All right, I'm going to turn it over there. And there we go. Right, there's my centre line there. There's hundred and odd ways of doing that. That's just how I chose to do it for this particular moment. Right, okay. So now, what we're going to do now, we've done our hole for our bolt to go in. That's going to tighten down. 
and we'll do this one for the leg. Now, this angle is it's not a critical angle. I mean, you can if you want to go for a 45 or whatever. I just I didn't really do anything. I just basically I just turned this in here to oh, roughly let's see about there I think something like that. Yeah, that looks about the same. That was it. That's all I did. That's how technical it was for, for it. Okay. Now, what I want to do is bring that down to about the middle there. And then I'm going to bring this round. Put my drill through there. Like so. Line that line up. I know that's there. Hopefully that's going to be where that will lock. You can bet your bottom dollar. No, it's not. Right, so I'm going to hold it. Okay. Right. Now, you can do this all on your drill press if you've got a drill press. If you bought one from Axminster, you might have to wait a few days before you can use it. <laughs> right, there we go. Holes through. Okay. So I took myself nice and slow there. Yeah, this is going to put that drill back over there. Right, this is done with. So if you ain't got one of these, it's very good for when you're drilling. Just, just make, it's just a piece of dowel. Put your hole for it. For I've got one for a six mil drill bit, and I've got that one for a, that's a nine mil drill bit. Okay. Right, so now we've got that done. We've got our hole there. We've got our hole there. And we're going to be parting off around on that line there. So that should all go good. Right, so let's get me tool rest back in. I'm going to get a smaller tool rest. Right, get that on there. And what I'm going to do, because I'm going to part this off and I don't want to have to try, actually, yeah, what I'm going to do first. While I've got it in here, I'm actually gonna screw that insert in there while everything's held in place. So, I've got my screwdriver. So all you do is pop the insert in there and then screw that down. Oh, I'm trying not to slip off of it. This is beach, so it's quite hard screwing it into here. It gets a good bite though. Right, okay, that's pretty much gone through. There you go, guys. That's in. Just make sure that bolt's going to go through. I normally end up damaging the thread with the screwdriver. So let me just uh, make sure that's going to go through there, all right. Just needs to clean that thread through. That's it, that's going through. There we are, that's gonna go through okay. Okay, that's all turning all right now. Just got rid of that swath there. Right. Take that out for a minute, because now we've got to pile it off, which is the reason I'll bring the towel stock up, because I've got that, that sticking up there. I don't want to be holding on to it when it parts off. I'd rather just let it wiggle about on here. So we'll start up. See where that is. Well, I'm just going to check. I didn't actually put a proper mark on that. Just want to check that's going to be. Yeah, that's all right there. Okay. We're okay. There we go. 
there we go. That's off and it ain't gone flying anywhere. There we go, that's off and off. Right, so there we go guys, that's what we've got. That's our bit. Okay, so we've got that bit. Now what we need to do is turn this bit. Okay, so just have a piece of wood like this. Right, we want to take this out of here. Now, do I want to pop that in there? I don't know whether that's going to hold that or not. No, no it's not. So we'll just go between centers with it. Just roughly find center on here. Over a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Right, okay. So, yeah. Big rest. Right, okay guys, face shield on, and we're gonna turn this, and this is for our leg. Now remember I said it's a nine mil hole, so uh, I'm gonna set my calipers up for the drill bit. There we go, they're set. Right, I'll leave those there for a minute. Everything's free, everything's turning all right. Okay. Can you do the other hand? Sorry? Can you do the other hand? To just put the turn bit on the end of here, right? We go back to the first part by chisel, and we've not to. Can't because I'm hitting my uh, live centre. So. I'll go to my little car by one. Right, there we go. That's that. So now I'm just gonna I'm a bit closer. I'm coming too close, just turn this down a little bit. Got that tiniest little foot there. Okay, and then I'm gonna come down on this end. So the stability, I'm leaving it that thick. Right, so I'm going to turn that around. That can pop on there now. and pop inside that. I can get my centre there. Okay. I'm going to turn this down. Guys, that's basically all we need.
Right, there we go. Right, if you want to be fussy, <laughs> there you go, Sandy. Done. Right. Not putting no finishes on it. It's not. It's not an ornament. It's a tool. Right. Okay. That's. Oh no, I'll leave that on because I've got another bit to do. Right. Okay. So that should. Let's hopefully. Yeah. Look at that. That fits in there. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to super glue that in, and I'm going to do that now, so that can dry while I'm doing the next bit. Okay. Okay. Wiggle there. Like I say, don't ask me what angle that is. It's that angle. <laughs> okay. I honestly, I don't know. Right. It should have been round maybe a little bit more, but never mind. There we go. I'm sure that's going to work. Right. Okay. So. That's it, right. I'm gonna leave that to set up. So that's our jig made, okay? That's how we make that. Now we've got to do the little, um, this little bit, okay? So again, we're gonna pop this between centers. And all I'm going to do is bring this to round. Well, actually, I'm going to... I'm going to put a little tenon on the end so I can just mount it into the chuck. So I need to drill it. So... That's all I want is that. Get a little bit round. Okay, that'll do for now. Right, that's all I want to do because I need to put that in the chuck now so I can. Uh... Yeah, that's round enough. So I can drill the end of it. Well, I think I'm going to leave this chuck for this one. Is that going to fit? Oh no, look, the tenon's a little bit too. Ah. All right, technical hitch. Mm -hmm. Right, technical hitch, I haven't got one that's gonna fit that, so I'm gonna have to go back and take that. I didn't take it down quite enough. Should have maybe measured it. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, let's uh just take that down a little bit more next time. Right, okay. Take two. Right, so we've put our tenon on there. So we're gonna put, oh look, I've got a chuck here. I'll use this one. <laughs> you never know, we might be lucky. Let's see if it fits. 
Oh, look at that, perfect. I'm getting good at this. <laughs> right, okay. Right, first off, I don't need all that, so I'm gonna part some of that off. I don't need all, it that long. So I'm gonna go to that there. Go. Right. Clean that end off. So we'll get it there. That's it. And now we've got to be drilling that. That looks about right. That is a 19 mil. Was it 16? 19. That's a 19 mil bit. speed down right I'm going down to Basically the depth of the bit, that's it. Right, so that bit's done. I'll leave that running for a minute. Right. Now what I'm going to do is take that down, so what am I looking for? A chisel. <laughs> right, I'm just going to use this little carbide one. now is I've got to take this down to the size of my tool post so you'll have to do it to what size tool post you've got come on do oh, hang on that's the wrong one sorry I used that they shouldn't be moved those ones never mind Right, okay, so that's my tool post size. Oh, look at that, hang on.
Just make sure I get that dead right. Just check that again. Yep, that's the right on there. That's it, that's on there. Right, so now I'm going to pop that off. Right, there we go. Parted off. So we pop that there, turn that off. Right, okay. I'm just going to use this hand, though. Huh? Turn me speed down a bit. Right, I should just use my hand held back for this. And what I've got to do is just take that edge off there, okay? So that's all I'm doing is taking that edge off. done that and all that is for is so that when we're in there we've got we've got that clearance okay we've got that bit of clearance if it was just left there's a hole that would that would keep hitting on the side so it just gives us a clearance for when we turn the tool right okay So there you go, that's it. Right, see you on the next one then. <laughs> what? I'm going to show them. Show them what? How to use it. How to use it. Well, it might not work. No. Um, right, okay. Show them how to use it. Yes, I suppose. Right, okay guys. Let's, uh, if I could have the wheel. Yep. Over the back there. Right, so we've got our wheel. And we're going to pop that in there. Right. Now we're going to bring our tail stock up. And then we're going to pop that into there. There we go. Don't over tighten it. It's just got, if you loosen it, then the wheel's just going to turn. So you just want it just tight enough that's it if you get any catching on it yeah stop so it's all right don't over tighten it keep it as it is like that right okay so we take our tool rest out we're going to put our um hoofa doofer in a little fidgy whatever i've called it it has a very technical name this thing right okay now I want to sharpen a chisel, so what chisels do I want to sharpen? Well, I don't really need any of my chisel sharpening, so. Um, right, okay, so what I've got, I'm going to. Right, put this chisel in. Now, a lot of the time, you'll do two inch. So if you measure it all up, so there's 50 mil there, 50 mil protrusion. It's a good starting point. A lot of them do 50 mil. Now you can have a look and just eyeball it that it's straight. There you go, that's straight. Right, and all I'm doing is I'm just giving it, don't over tighten it. Remember, it's only wood. You don't need to over tighten it. Just give it a little, boom, nip, that's it, done. Right, that's my chisel in there. Okay, so I'm 50 mil out. Now, what's the size from here? Doesn't matter. All you've got to do is get onto whatever your bevel is on the chisel. If you haven't got one already on your chisel, 
then you're laughing because you can, right. Now this is, this one's already got a bevel on here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna come out a fraction more. Move my tool rest out a little bit. So I can actually change the bevel on it. I'm gonna make it slightly steeper, okay? So just eyeball things, make it that it's in there. Right, so. I've got a gap underneath now, so I'm actually going to be taking a bit of this down, okay? Making it a different bevel. So whatever you do yours at, you can measure. Now, all you need to do is if you get your ruler and you measure, you can measure how far out you are from your on your banjo, and then you'll be able to reproduce it. The only trouble with doing that is with these wheels, these reduce in their size when you use them. CBM wheels, fantastic. They never reduce. You can mark up your sizes, keep it all. You can write on this. You can make one up for every different bowl gouge or whatever gouge you want. Different angles, have it all set. With these wheels, you can't do it. You're gonna, but this isn't, this isn't a permanent fix. This is to get you by. That's all it is. You're going to be able to sharpen your tools up to start using them. Okay, That's all it is until you can get yourself a grinding system. So now remember, mask on. Right, speed's right down. I'm going to turn it on. Now, I've got that at 800 RPM, okay, is what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start on it, I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to... Show the other side, I'm going around the pit. I'm actually changing my grind here. I'm actually changing now. I'm going to show you. You can see. You might not see. It, I don't know. I'm actually taking more off. I'm 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 changing, changing the angle. And this this was already sharpened, so I haven't got any that I actually need to sharpen. So I'm actually just showing you here. I'm, I'm going to actually just change the grind a bit. Now you can see I'm sharp, you can see the sparks coming off. But now, if I was doing this, that's cold. If I was doing this on a grinder, this would be hot and it would be going blue already. You'd have to keep cooling it down. On here, I don't have to do that, I'm not turning it too fast. And all you've got to do is just move it down. So now I've come, I've got down to this bit. I've got a single, that's it all the way round. Now I don't like it that deep on mine, so I'm gonna put a little relief grind on the back. So all I'll do for that is I'm just gonna move this in. That was probably half an inch, and I'm gonna just have a look and check. Yep, that'll do me. Right. I'm getting a, a little relief bevel on there. Right. Yep. Lovely and sharp. Right, so. We're going to take that out of there. There we go. Let's pop that out. And I'll just... We'll pop that down there and I'll show you guys. Now I'm hoping you can see that. Now I've got a single facet all the way round, okay? And I've just put a second bevel on. That means when I come in, I can just roll it a bit better. I, li I like a second bevel on mine. I explained on one of my other videos. But 
that I'm going to I'm going to show I'm going to do a few cuts on that in a minute on a piece of wood so we just see how sharp that is okay so remember that's this chisel here okay I'm going to put it down on here right so that's for doing that but what about what about your roughing gouge how are we going to sharpen a roughing gouge okay we'll take that out we want our tool rest back in we want to put our tool rest back in there. okay now this I must say I made it up a bit earlier okay just to save time now all you want to do you can do this on your lathe if you ain't got a drill press I drilled this on drill I've got a square piece of wood okay it's just a piece of square wood this is for what I've done it's four inches by just over three inches so 80 mil by uh, 96 mil okay is what that actually is and I've put a hole in there I'm not sure what that is I think that was a 40 mil hole uh, do it for whatever like I said if you've it's if that's your biggest roughing gouge if that's your biggest roughing gouge then that's all you need to do that hole for is that one okay um, I say I just did this one I've got a roughing gouge here that I can put in it this is a 31 mil right so now protrusion don't really matter whatever you want to really get set at now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that up gently by there I'll tell you what I've put that I haven't measured nothing I'm just putting that in and I'm going to see right that is actually uh 75 yeah 70 mil that's protruding 70 mil out now I'm just going to do it by eye and make sure it's pretty much level it's not major doesn't have to be dead level there like I said get a little thing just give it a little nip that's it it's tight that's all it needs if you want to be really sure you can put your straight in and look at that well I'm just good <laughs> right okay so we've got that right so how are we going to do that now if Lisa grabs me a marker pen from just in the back there any color and what we're going to do can you get one yeah. right okay right so we just as just uh, this is already sharp so i don't really need to sharpen it but i'm going to sharpen i'm going to give it another go right so we just put a bit of color on there okay now we're going to bring out oh banjo in again bring it back out we're going to just get this until we get it we rub it like that hold it i'll look look you'll think i've done this before ain't you look at that right we're bang on so we've gone through we've got us that's that line right through okay so we tighten that down again we start up we're on a nice slow grind we're on 800 rpm right put that over your tool rest bring it in and roll it Once you've got your grind, guys, that's it. That pen mark's all gone. That is sharp. That is it, it's done, okay? Now, for me, on my grinding system, I actually, I use the same fit. Because a lot of them, you'll see a roughing gouge, you pull an arm out, you put it in a little cup and you do it. I don't like them. I'm, I welded mine, I, I made one out of metal. So I, I, weld, I made one up. And this takes my, because I have a, the two inch, ones this takes my two inch roughing gouge and that that screws in there i have two screws so it keeps it nice and level and i sharpen mine exactly the same way but on my on my grinder there and i just roll it and that's it okay because for me i like now as i said this is to get you by it's to do get your sharpening get you using your tools your tools are going to be sharp you can't work with blunt tools okay now I do mine like I don't go for a straight across on my roughing gouges. I use, a, as you can see, I use a very steep angle. This gives me a skew like cut and it stays sharp for so long. As long as you don't just go in 
like this. You know, don't do this, ride the bell, lift the handle. No, get your, get your chisel round here, run it along the side, ride the bevel, come along on the bevel, okay? That way it stays sharp so long. It's, it's, it makes such a difference, it really does. But anyway, I hope that's helped you guys. That's how you can, I mean, you can see that's a, that's a single facet all the way round, okay? I, I always knock my corners back that little bit and it makes it, and I suppose you will see now whether these are sharp. So let's have a look. That's, that's the easiest way, isn't it? Let's see what we do. And, you know, I mean, if you if you go anywhere to turn, if you want to do your little demos, you can take your own sharpening stuff with you. Don't have to rely on grinders. But the, the fact with that, on these, that I, these things burn your, they eat your tools away so quick, these wheels. They really do. This is a fine grit. This is, um, it just says fine. I don't know exactly know what grit it is. Um, but if that's turning at 2,000 plus RPM, that's way too, even over 1,000, that's, that's too far. It's going to burn your tools up. The fact, if you put it on your lathe and you've got variable speed, even if you haven't, if you've got belt speeds, put it on your slowest one. Do it at 550. I sharpen all my tools on my CBM wheel at 500 RPM. I only go faster if I've got to put a regrind on it. Okay, but basically reshape it or something. If I'm just sharpening, they go on 500 and that's it. And they're all sharpened up. <coughs> Angles, don't, don't be... I'm going to get my sleeve caught. Don't be paranoid about angles. With this angle here, don't be paranoid about it, okay? Um, 40 degree, 40, 40 grind, 45, 55. Doesn't matter. I don't even know what that is at the moment. I can't tell you. Let me have a look. That's probably around about 50 degree angle on that, okay? If you want it steeper, just move your, move your banjo in a little bit. Give you a slightly steeper angle, okay? But... Get to be able to use any grind. That's that's the best way. If you can use any grind, you'll be all right. If you just want to turn wood, then get paranoid about it. If you want to be a wood turner, then don't worry about it. You'll get used to all the grinds. You'll be able to turn with any tool. You should be able to just put your hand out. If someone gives you a tool, come over and use it. Okay. You shouldn't have to be, I can only use my XX chisel or my XX grind. You should be able to use anything. Right, let's get a piece of wood. I'm just gonna, I'm only gonna use a, just a square piece of wood, put this on here. Okay, I'm only, to show, I'm not gonna turn anything. We ain't got time for that. This is, I only want this to be a very, very quick video. <laughs> right, okay, we've got a piece of wood on. Now let's see if these, Tools are sharp enough to turn with. Right, get the speed up. Right, first off, we try the roughing gauge. And like I say, guys, if you, the way you'll be told to turn, come in here, <coughs> right, you've got your bevel, right, lift the handle, start cutting. And yes, it will. What I want you to see, I can get it, right, look what's coming off, all just little, little pieces, right, because the minute you lift that handle, you're removing that bevel from the wood, you're scraping, the wood is coming down on that cutter that way, you're scraping, if you get a nice steep, steep grind like this, come in, tool on your hip, Handle right down, coming out the side here, right? Start riding that bevel. Now, it comes through there. And then what you'll see is very quickly, I can catch them. You try and catch them here. Now, because I'm riding my bevel, now what I get is these, see, and they're not crushed, they're open. If, they, if they're crushed up, small, that's scraping, right? And that's not even round yet. I'm getting that, and look, it's not round yet. So let's carry on until we get it round.
Nearly. Right, now we ground. Right. And now look at the shavings we're getting. This is kiln dried beech. And I'm getting long shavings like that. Okay. And And I've got a finish like that. Okay? That's as good as any skewer's gonna give you. Alright? And you just see, I just sharpened that on there, on the lathe, with with that. Okay? That's absurd, isn't it? That cost nothing, it's scrap. It cost me for a bolt and a thread. That's it. Just drill your hole. Get it centre and put one of those threaded inserts in and you bolt through. That's it. It's not a forever fix. Although, if you can make one up, if you can get one made up out of metal, I've made mine, I've had mine for eight years now. Still going perfect. Okay. Right, let's put this back on. Because we sharpened up our spindle gouge as well, didn't we? Yep. Right, okay. So now we see what our spindle gouge does. Right, two rest in, nice and close. Oh, nice. Right, let's do a little cozy bit. A bit big for doing little coves, but we'll get there. Right, we'll do a... Oh, we should try and roll that over. A bit big for this. And that's why I like to put that little leaf grind on the back. It allows me to get in. Right, just clean that side up there. Clean that side up there. And that's it. A little uh, clean up down here. We might want to do a little might want to do a little taper. Right, we just give a final cut. Oh, that vibrated at the end there. There we go, right, come in again again. So I'll do that, that's it, right there, 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 and there. Why not do on that little piece? Right now, what I want you to see guys, now you see how I sharpened that, sharpened that with this, okay? That didn't cost, that didn't cost 239 pounds. <laughs> right, you gotta remember what this, this is. That sharpened this chisel, put a different, different angle on it, okay? Even put relief, and that is super split, and oh, that is very sharp. And that's the finish we got straight off our tool. Okay, you can see I've just done that with that tool. That's the finish we've got. Okay, there's not one bit of tear out on that, not one little bit. No tear out. It's it'd be a shame to take a bit of sandpaper to that and rough it up, wouldn't it? Really, but there you go. Anyway, guys, I hope that's helped. I hope that's helped. Probably a lot of people out there say, Go and get a pro edge and do this and do that. Well, yes, that's fine if you've got. If you've got that money to pay out on one but if you haven't guys and you need to sharpen your chisels look it's very easy okay with these things you can't go wrong just set your set your angle put pop that in there okay tighten that down set it at whatever you've got to have it set it nothing's even critical put it in there get it on there and that's all you've got to do is roll it you can't go wrong
okay you can see a single facet all the way around like that a little second degree and there you go and if if you've got to do your bolt your bolt gouges will be exactly the same just set it for your angle if you've already been sharpened and you've got your edge oh you're fantastic you're laughing because all you've got to do is put that in and match that up i showed you the other one put a bit of felt pen on there go in just turn the wheel slowly and make sure it takes a line straight through that felt pen if it does that you're set and you just go and sharpen it don't worry about what wing don't don't worry about this angle down this side don't worry about this what you got here when you come over just go with what go with the flow go with whatever it is okay that's fine that 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 will do and that's well there you go spindle gouge as you can see you can do all those little bits you take the bottom of a bowl off you could even hollow part of a bowl with that there you go okay and your roughing gouge well you see what that could do you see that gave a cut like a like a skew chisel and there you go single facet all the way around so there you go guys i hope that's been of help and i hope if you have got any problem you, you know you don't want to go and buy a sharp you don't want to buy one to be honest i looked off slow grinders i've tried yeah, two 260 270 quid for a slow grinder yeah slowly empties your bank account that's what it does uh. it's um no i'm sorry guys for me that, that i i can't find a grinder that that will do what this does i can go from basically 100 rpm on this one it's variable speed all right if you're belt driven ones where you've got to change your belt for your speeds five 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 fifty they normally start at you don't want to go over a thousand you know if you've got to really re-grind your chisels then all right you can put a bit more speed on but you, even then don't keep it at a slow speed don't get your. i see and i've seen a lot of even very very experienced turners out there and you look at their chisels when they're turning and their tips are blue shouldn't be blue shouldn't have no blue not one of my chisels has got a blue tip on it not one i couldn't wouldn't be able to find you one don't ever blue the end of your chisel the minute it goes blue you're taking all that all that hard work of this fantastic super duper tool okay this special steel if that goes blue you've just ruined it you've taken out all that hard work you've got to keep it like that if you do it on a keep it cold you should be able to sharpen put your hand on it shouldn't get burned it'll be warm but it won't be hot it won't be to a point once it goes blue no you've ruined it that's all that there is to it and and your edge will go in no time you'll get Halfway through a bowl, blunt. I don't have to sharp stop and sharpen halfway through a bowl. My bowl gouge will last me from start to finish. It stays sharp. And don't forget, don't scrape. Cut. Find your angle to cut. Use it to cut. Don't scrape it. Okay? And you get finishes like that. That's that's my thing. What I aim for is, is a finish. A finish that you could give that to someone and they'd think you've sanded that. And a bit of paper ain't touched that. So there you go. Anyway, I'm just waffling on now. That's it, to the next one. I've got some, I'm doing, I've got a box over there and I'm gonna show you how, I'm gonna do, be doing a load of these. I'm gonna actually video it. I've got a plastic, little plastic box. I've got, I'm making these for my Christmas tree, okay? I've got a load of them to make because I'm gonna have a, an indoor and an outdoor Christmas. So I'm making loads of these little, look, these little bird houses out of you, okay? Tiny little things. <laughs> And they're going to all be hanging on my Christmas tree. So look, I've got all different. I've got some slightly bigger ones, these ones. Um, and again, but these little ones, I just go with whatever the shape is that I get out of it. I just put it in a chuck and turn it. Now, I'm going to be doing something. I've done some with um, carbide, some I've done with spindle gouge, and I've done quite a few with a skew as well. So I'm going to go through doing it with a skew because I did have someone speaking to me yesterday who's having a lot of trouble with their skew, getting catches. So... Yeah, <clears throat> so I'm going to be doing some of those on a, a video. I just sit that standard turn. I've got a, I've got to turn about fifty or sixty of these. For I've got two. Maybe I'm having a big outside. Probably more than I'm going to have to turn even more than that. <laughs> there you go. Orders have been given. Right. So I've got loads of them to turn. So I'm going to be turning some of those, and we'll be doing some other bits. So thank you guys. If you'd like to hit the subscribe button and subscribe. I'm doing well on that at the moment. I'm really pleased. I'm over 500 subscribers, which in, in basically four months of doing the videos, I think that's pretty good. But if I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway, okay? I'm going to show you what I'm going to give away. Right. 
So when I get to a thousand subscribers, I'm gonna be giving one away, one of these. This one I'm gonna be giving away, okay? This is the new Ultimate Hollower, but it's gonna be with an adjustable handle. You get an 18 inch bar, okay? That bar is down here inside, so you've got quite a bit of range to go up and down. And you get a six mil tip, and you will get an eight mil tip. And that's gonna be the giveaway when I get to a thousand subscribers. So if you're watching these and not subscribing, then you don't want one of these, that's fair enough. If you do want one of these, subscribe, you might be able to win it. Okay guys, right, thank you for joining me. If you haven't joined me, well then you don't even know I've done it. So there you go. <laughs> right, I hope that helps guys. I hope you can sort out any of your problems if you have any problem with a bit of grinding. As I say, might be you don't want a grinder, might be you can't find the right one. I never could. There ain't one out there that does what I want it to do, so I made my own. Um, but you've got a lathe. This can be a sander, it can lay, it can turn, it can drill, it can, it's a drill press, it's everything. And it can be a sharpening system as well. Um, and it's, it's, it's good and it's accurate. As I've just shown you, you know, your wood turners, come on, get turning. You can make all these little bits and pieces. And that you could make one for every gouge you've got, just write on it what you want, what protrusion you want, everything, and go with it. Right, so there you go, guys. Right now, I'm off to have some dinner. See you later. Toodle pip. Bye, guys.